was going on and talking about plants. I come from a plant uh, rich background that I decided to leave at one point in my life because I thought I needed to do something else as we often do. I grew up on a nursery. My parents were carnation growers um, in Mountain View and then later in East Palo Alto. And then later when I was a teenager, I took over my uncle's and aunt's flower shop in Los Altos. So I was a floral designer, flower shop owner for about 10 years, actually Los Altos Hills. Um, before I went back to school, and that's where marine biology called me. But now I find myself teaching people about nature and how to get closer to nature, to slow down, to see it, and using a nature journal to help you learn more about nature, see more about the world around you, and using it as a tool to um, increase your memory about what the things are going on. So, um, I had some slides, but I think I'm just going to talk to you and then show you some examples from my journal journals, and then we're going to do some activities together. So hopefully you have um, maybe a house plant or a leaf or some kind of piece of nature near you. If not, you can, I'll share mine with you on the screen. Um, so nature journaling is, is about being in nature and all of you know that very well. And um, it, um, we use drawing to help us see more about nature. So if we have a rose in front of us and we take a pen and a piece of paper and we draw the rose, we're going to notice more details about that rose than if someone just handed it to you, you looked at it, smelled it, and handed it back. Right, Drawing it, you might notice something about the sepals or maybe something about the way the petals curl, or maybe you notice you know, the leaves are shaped in a certain way. Um, those kinds of little details escape us um, very frequently because our brains have so much information that we need to filter. Right, so There's a lot to look at. So I like to use the journal as kind of a scrapbook to my experiences in nature. And um, I'm going to show a few pages here. I'm going to share my screen. Um, and, you know, I want to say that um, sometimes people get a little, feel a little intimidated with drawing, but I want to share um, some pages. Nature journaling uses a combination of words and pictures and numbers. So it's not all about um, making a beautiful painting. You may, you may have seen some people sharing nature journals that have just beautiful drawings of something that's realistic and it's taking them hours and it's a beautiful um, realistic piece of art. That's not what we're talking about today. I'm talking about having a notebook or a journal, something bound that you're writing down words and notes and maybe the weather, the date, the temperature, things that you notice in nature. So this particular page, I was at Starbucks and I saw these brown shrubby things and I was waiting for a friend. So I walked over and I noticed Oh my goodness, these are forsythia. They've cut them into these little round balls. And it was so sad to me because I grew up with forsythia growing wild with long branches. And so I took some time to sketch the faraway view and then looking close up and then just making some observations about what I was noticing. And then some close-ups of the different flowers. I'm gonna, we're gonna um, work on how we can draw in a simple manner in a few minutes. Um, I made a little haiku here because I was really inspired by what I was seeing. So um, your journal can include um, little sketches. They can also include data, like numbers. I was really interested. I have a yellow cherry guava in my garden. And every year I notice that some years there's more fruits than other years. And sometimes it's smaller, sometimes it's bigger. So I've been keeping track of the size. I have a background in science, so you might see that coming out, um, how many millimeters wide they are. And I was kind of keeping tally marks of these guavas in this particular year. Um, noting that the birds were eating a lot of them. And you'll see that the, the drawings are not super realistic paintings. They are quick sketches. And I do that on purpose so that I don't get caught up in my mind, um, you know, that it needs to be a beautiful picture. Um, some other things that you might do is keeping track of what you're growing. So here's some seeds. I've 
glued some seeds in here. Look how beautiful these seeds are. I had not really paid attention to how, how much diversity we have in just the seeds. So I decided to glue some seeds in, write a little bit about which what they were, a little sketch, how it, describing them. Um, and then later on, I can put down maybe something about what the plants look like. Um, I might notice something that's going on in my garden. And these are earth stars, a type of fungus that grow in my front yard by the mailbox. And on this particular day, I found about a dozen of them. So uh, nature journaling is the is about just finding things that excite you and capture capture your attention. And these earth stars captured my attention. So I I um took a few of them, brought them into the house, and then I also took some photographs. So sometimes I will draw from photographs. Sometimes I will draw from, from real life. I use this to record some facts. So I went to a website. Um, oh, no, this is actually from a book um, from David Aurora. I learned about some vocabulary, some things about the, the, um, the, the fungus. So I can use the journal as a place where I'm expanding my learning. So the discussion today about amaryllis was really interesting because common names can get us into trouble. So, you know, this could be a place where you're learning about the botanical name of something and you're putting it down so that you can remember um, and expand your um, knowledge. Also, the journal is a place where you can record what's going on in your garden. I don't know whose eggs these were, but I noticed on this leaf a cluster of eggs. They look like this. I also saw this beetle. So I thought, I wonder if this is a beetle. And I might not um, solve the mystery right away, but I know that on, oh, I don't have a date here. Um, oh, right here, this one. In August, um, on the tomatillo plant, I found these little bugs. And so maybe when I grow them again, I might be on the lookout for them. Um, another cool thing that you can do for, for plants um, is this was, my mom lives in San Jose and she's got this big, beautiful California buckeye tree. And when I would go visit her, I would do a journal page of what was going on with the tree. This one is actually um, a collection of some photographs. I took photos every time I visited and decided to do a little timeline. So you can do this with things in your garden showing the timeline from the first bloom to the, its fullness, where the um, flowers are starting to decay and as the fruits, um, fruits grow. So by keeping track of the things in your garden, you get an intimate knowledge of something that you can't get in a field guide or in a book or a website. And you are um, documenting your place, your special piece of nature, um, through your garden and through your journaling. Okay, I'm going to find, let's place my journal now. All right, we'll just go ahead and use this. So I'm going to invite you to pull out um, your piece of nature, whatever that is, and a pencil. We don't have to have any special tools. Um, you can just have a pencil or a pen and um, something from nature. Let's see, actually, before we do that, I'm going to um, share some photos here we can sketch together. So I'm gonna stop and share my screen with you. All right, so no special tools are needed. Um, just something to write on and something to write with. I would say keep it simple. And if you're interested in a list of supplies that I use, I, um, I can send that out maybe to, um, to Grace later and she can um, email it to the group. Um, and with nature journaling, we um, make observations and we write down what we notice. Um, what, what do you see? What are the colors, the shapes, the size? And then we get into our curiosity and wondering. Like a lot of times I'm in my garden and I see bug bites and wonder who is eating my flowers. And I want to get to the bottom of who's, um, who's making my leaves go away or flowers go away. So there's this curiosity and I start to ask questions and observe a little more. So the journal is a place where I can keep my notes and I know what I've tried or what I've looked for. Um, and I can look for relationships. You know, what does this 
thing in nature remind me of? You know, maybe I'm this flower reminds me of another flower and it makes me wonder if they're in the same family. And by making those observations on my own, um, I'm going to remember that information much more. Um, it'll be in my memory much more readily because I've written it down and I've made those connections rather than just going to a resource and trying to memorize things. So this is just a fun way to expand our knowledge. So these three prompts are really fun to use. You can jot this down in the corner of your notes. I notice um, in writing down what you notice. I wonder. And then what does this remind you of? So we're going to step through this um, in just a minute. First, we'll start off with some brain training exercises. Um, I call them they're warm ups. And many people have um, come to nature journaling with an apprehension to drawing. Some people just love drawing, but I'm speaking to those who, any of you who might have a little fear or discomfort with drawing, just know that if you can pick up your pen and, and put your name, you can draw something that you see. And we use drawing not for art, but as a learning tool in nature journaling. So we're going to do a couple things here. I'm going to ask you to, um, let me see, whoops, get my share in a different way. So desktop. Okay, I'm going to change my screen so that you're going to see partly my journal and partly this photograph so that we can do this together. Um, this is one exercise I do um, often with my students and myself um, when I'm feeling a little stuck, I'll, I'll do a blind contour. So a blind contour drawing, you might have heard of this if you've done some art. I'm gonna put the date here first because that's always good. 2022, January 25. Tuesday, because I find, you know, with my science background, um, I've just gotten used to putting the date on there. And you just never know if you forget to put the date on, you won't remember when you took those notes. So always just put the date, the time, the location. That's always helpful. But for this particular page, we're, we're going to do some um, blind contours. So first of all, um, blind contours are a way of drawing that helps us focus our eyes on the subject. So you see this columbine flower, you'll take your eye and go around like you were an ant walking on the edge of the petals. And as your eye is walking around, your hand is gonna be on the page. And here's the, here's the trick, two tricks. One, don't look at your paper. You're gonna look at the screen and look at the columbine. And two, your pen will be magnetized to the paper. So try not to lift your pencil. It's going to be one continuous line. So not looking at the paper, I'm gonna show you yours, mine, so that you know that it's not gonna look like a columbine. It's gonna look like a squiggly line and that's exactly okay. So we're training our eye, brain and hand together. So as I'm looking at the columbine, you can follow along, just go around each petal and your hand is going to be drawing what your eye is seeing. And because my pen is not going to leave the paper, it's going to backtrack sometimes to go and, and get to some of these other petals. So I think I'm going to go around and do these big purple petals. Maybe a little detail here and then into these white ones. And this is just a fun exercise to help us focus on the details. So you probably notice that there's different shapes and colors, and maybe you've even noticed something else on this flower. Um, and, the, and the goal is not to draw a pretty columbine. It really is training our eye to see the flower, our hands to follow our, our eye. And you can put as much or as little detail as you want. This is a really great exercise to do um, on your own. You can go slowly or you can go quickly. Um, and I always forget where I start. So I think I started up here. So I'm gonna stop here. Okay, well, this is not too bad. I managed to just keep it all in the center. <laughs> but yours might look like a big squiggly line and that's totally okay. So this is a blind contour. I'm training my brain. So what, the goal is not to make a pretty picture. Um, another exercise that you can try is called, um, I call it a modified contour drawing. And this is 
when we are looking at the flower and drawing, but we can come back and peek at the page once in a while. So I'm gonna come, I'm gonna do this one more time. And I'm gonna invite you all to just pick up a pencil and give this a try. This is, learning how to draw is um, a skill that we can all develop. It just takes a little practice. And again, I'm not gonna worry about this flower looking perfectly like a columbine, because what I'm doing right now is just practicing, noticing the shapes of the leaves and where they're placed in relation to each other. Maybe some details about the anthers there, or the shapes of the shapes of the petals. Okay. So and there's oh, it looks like I missed a petal. <laughs> Here's my contour drawing. So not to worry if your picture looks funny. Um, so those are two activities that you can do um, with drawing, practicing, and getting. Um, Here's another one. Let's just do this one as a contour drawing because I just love the shape of this lily. So we'll do this one as a modified contour drawing. So one, one more time. Um, I'm going to start up at the top. And like I said, this is just to warm up your eye and your brain and your hand. Is not to worry about what the picture is going to look like. Just follow. It is easier to draw a two-dimensional object. So this is why we're starting with the photograph here than it is to draw something that's three-dimensional. So just follow the edges, whatever you can see. If you can't see all of it, that's, that's totally okay. And you might notice while you're drawing like, oh, look at that. There's these different shaped long things. I wonder why there's so many. You know, you might count and notice look how many there are. And look at the shapes. Where are they radiating out from? And I always encourage people in nature journaling that you do not have to know the names of everything you see. And I know that, you know, in this garden group, you're probably wanting to know the names of the things you see. And you can, you can gather that information. But what we're doing right now is, is helping us see more of the details. Because in order to identify things, we need to pay attention to all the um, you know, the shapes of the petals or the location of where they are, the colors, that kind of thing. So here's another modified contour drawing. So I do this sometimes um, when I'm um, feeling stuck with a particular drawing. Um, doing some modified contour drawings are really, really fun. Okay, I'm going to move on to I'll stop my share for a moment. Is everyone following okay? Maybe you can just show me a thumbs up. Yeah, or waving. All right, so some folks are trying. Okay, great. Now we're going to move on to um, doing something live. So I went in my garden today and I found um, this geranium that's growing into my neighbor's hedge all the way up to the top. So I know he's going to cut it down. So I went and kind of pulled it down and maybe I'll replant these because, right, we know that we can grow these cuttings. So this has come into the house with me. And I'm going to do a nature journal page with this. And we're going to step through together one way that we can nature journal this. Okay, so can you see my journal, everyone? And just give me a thumbs up. Okay, all right. So I have this geranium here. Um, I'll tell some folks that, you know, you can always trace around your leaf if you want. I want to leave it on the stem because I want to capture the stem in just a minute. But I think what I will do is um, if you have a leaf or a flower, you can take, take that object. If you don't have one, I'm going to hold mine right here and you can draw along with me. I think I'm going to draw this leaf in the center um, right now. So I'm going to do the same thing, just like we did a modified contour drawing. So I'm going to be looking at the leaf. And I'm not going to worry about getting um, you know, everything perfect because I'm not doing art right now. I am 
doing an exercise where I'm going to be asking some questions and noticing um, about my leaf. So you can draw the same leaf or you can draw your own. And I've done the outline and the angle, I'm looking at it from the side. So my angle is going to be a little different from, from your view from the top. Um, and I'm noticing some veins. And so when I talk about noticing, um, it would be like, what do you see on your leaf? Maybe you see some veins. Um, I'm noticing something right away. So I'm noticing a smell. So you could write um, what you notice and you can make it as like a little bullet point list like this if you want. Smells fragrant. Some people don't like the smell of geranium, but I like the smell. So it smells fragrant. Geranium smell, right? And if we're familiar with that, we can write that down. I'm also noticing that there's a faint um, dark band in my leaf here but I'm gonna just scribble in here. And I'm giving everyone permission to scribble. This is not about um, making it look perfect. So just scribble away in, in your notes because this is notes about the geranium that I'm making. So I'm gonna, um, if you're worried about art, one thing that's really helpful is putting words on the page as well as pictures right away. It, it kind of takes the pressure off and making lines. So I'm gonna make a line here and say, I see a, a faint, um, brown um, ring in the center of the leaf. Um, what else do I notice? I, I notice the edge. So if you have, there's some really interesting scalloped edges at the top. So I might, um, I might zoom in like this. So I'm gonna show you some um, strategies to make drawing your nature much easier to simplify it in your journal. One is zooming in. So let's say that you have a leaf that has um, scalloped edges or zigzags. You could put a circle on that little, little section that you wanna zoom out and then make an arrow that grows. This is one way. And I'm gonna put another circle in here and then I'm gonna show this detail in here. So right in here so that we can see. What it looks like, there's some detail there. So I might say it's got a wavy edge with a tiny bit of red, tiny red line on the edge. You know, it's kind of hard to see. I see when I turn it. Ooh, look at that. When I look at the side, look at the stem. The stem is red here. So another strategy is zooming out um, to put a bigger view in a smaller part. I'm going to do that because I'm running out of room. So I'll do um, like this. So like a cartoon of what I'm seeing. So that's the flower. Here's a stem and it connects over here to another stem and another stem and a big leaf. So this is a kind of a cartoony, it's like a little cartoon or diagram. And this is a really quick way to draw something, to show some information. And I don't wanna get caught up in um, all of the crazy detail because my brain will make me wanna do everything detailed. and. I, I don't want to spend two hours in this little little corner picture. So here we go, this is zoomed out. So this is the stem, stem of geranium. And then um, a cool thing you can do if you want to zoom in on some detail, like I think I'm gonna write in here because I noticed that the stem is red, like it's got a sunburn, um, but it's not on this side. So that's kind of cool. So you might know why certain aspects of your plant are the way they are, but I'm gonna invite you to adopt a beginner's mind. And that comes from um, the Zen tradition. And this is a really great way to settle down the, the maybe critical thinking that you might have. I, I don't know if you have, I have an inner critic that's always, always speaking and preventing me from doing things. 
Um, and I can let her know that even though I've grown up with plants all my life, and then I can guess what's happening, I'm going to set that aside and just let the curiosity come up and the observation come up. So even though I might know why certain things are a certain way, I'm just going to make those observations. So I'm going to say, I see the stem is red. Stem is um, red like a sunburn on one side. So making some observations. Um, I'm also noticing this is a really long flower stalk. So whatever you're noticing, you can write down long flower stalk. There might you because you might have a geranium that has short flower stalks. Who knows? Um, I really want to get to the flower. So I think what I'll do is um, maybe I'll put the flower down here. How do I do this? I don't want to break him. I'm going to turn him like this and I'll hold. Um, how do I want to draw this? I think I will draw it sideways. Okay, so I'm going to draw this flower stalk. Ooh, I'm noticing, I never noticed these little leafy bits on the side before. Um, and I'm going to draw from the angle that I see it. So if you're drawing this flower, it's going to look slightly different than, than my view. So I see a bud and I see several, um, several flowers in here. And if this happened to have like 20 flowers on it, you don't have to draw all 20 flowers. You can just focus on the one in the front and add more detail. So I'm going to do another modified contour drawing and go around and like noticing there's all these layered petals. I am not going to worry about getting everything perfect because nature is always imperfect, right? There's always different shapes. Okay, so there's my flower. And here's, I'm just going to do one bud here. Well, maybe I'll do another one over here. So I might say there's, and I'll count one, two, three. So putting numbers is always kind of nice too. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, seven buds, one open. So that's what I'm noticing. I'm noticing these are kind of a deep, dark, red petals. Ooh, on top, but look at the back. On top and the, and the back is, how would we describe that? It looks like white with red spray paint. White with um, red speckles, like, like um, not spray paint, what is that? Airbrushed, airbrushed. So you can use words and descriptions that from totally non-gardening to describe the thing that you're seeing. Um, I might note, this is this really beautiful little bud. Maybe I will draw some detail in here. Um, I could add color later and say the, the buds have red edges. I'm noticing these, let's see, these are the sepals, but you know, it makes me wonder what are these things, right? Look at that. There's these pretty little leafy bits that are at the base of this cluster of flowers. So I could ask that question here um, and say, what are these? Are they leaves? And I'm going to um, just say that with nature journaling, this is not about getting the right answer or having an answer for every question. It's about inspiring the curiosity to keep going so that you can keep exploring. And this is an ongoing practice that perhaps I will look, at, look up geraniums later if I'm really interested and I'll go to my book and say, okay, I want to learn more about geraniums. If I'm not that interested, I might just make these observations 
right? Add a little color to my geranium, um, observe a little bit more, and then put this in a vase or plant it somewhere. Um, and then maybe eventually later on, something else might pop up and I get find out the name of this thing or find out, um, you know, something about another question I've had. So one thing is like, I wonder why, why does it smell so strong? And it's not the flower that smells, it's like the stem and the leaf. So that's, you know, an interesting question. And I might guess, I wonder, um, could it be to deter predators? And you'll see that the more questions you ask, more your own brain will start to look for the answers in what you already know and what's in front of you. So I might start to ask more questions about the smell. I'm like, oh, I wonder if, if the stem smells or if the leaf smells or do the buds smell, do the petals smell and, and checking out all those different. So when we go with questions, we can go all directions. I could go down a road of questions with the uh, red. I noticed that it's red on one side and green on the other. I wonder if it's because of the sun, right? I mean, I'm wondering, I'm guessing this is the part that's facing the sun. Well, I might go out in the garden and, and just check and see, like, is this the south facing side? I wonder. I wonder what fate, what what way, what direction this um, plant was facing, and then make those observations. Um, so let's see. I'm going to real quick add a little color so you can see how I do this. I um, I just like exploring nature and asking lots of questions. So I try not to get too caught up in um, the the artistic part of of nature journaling, like you can definitely spend more time, color, paint, whatever you want with, um, you know, great detail. The way that I journal is really about making the observations, asking lots of questions. And sometimes I might do more painstaking um, drawings, but for the most part, I just, I'm really, it makes me happy to just observe in this way. Let's see, the stem, these parts were green, right? See this, and then um, the red. Does anyone have any questions while I'm, while I'm kind of finishing this up? I guess you can tell us about your tools later, like this nifty um, thing that's not quite a brush, but it's doing your watercolor. Oh yes, this is um, a water brush. So yeah, it'll, it'll be, I can send a link to a web, um, one of my web pages. I, I go through all of the supplies that I use <clears throat> um, with links so that you know what they look like and where you can get, you know, some places where you could get them. Um, it's, they're, they're synthetic bristles and you just load it up with um, paint and there's a water reservoir. So when you squeeze, you can squeeze out water. And so I can clean off, I just have a tissue right now, but you can use a cloth and clean off your brush, squeezing the water out. And then you can add a new color. So this is really great when you're outside and journaling and you don't have, you know, so it makes it portable. You don't have to sit at a table with a cup of water in your paints and um, you can make a, a, a really, you know, you can make this much quicker. Oh, I wanted to add the, the red on one side. So it's like a little bit of red over here, right on the side. Um, and then you can add, you know, a title, maybe, maybe your title is based on something, um, something that you discovered in your journaling, you know, maybe it'll be like um, suntan geraniums or something, or um, something about the fragrance, you know, and then this becomes this fun exploration. This was 10 minutes of me getting to know this geranium a little bit better. And, you know, maybe I'll um, put it in a glass of water and see if the roots come and, and I can keep track of it in my journal, you know, day one, day five, day 10, you know, what's happening with the roots. Or maybe I, um, I'm watching the flowers bloom. How long does it take for these flowers to finish blooming? Do they always have eight flowers in a cluster? Right, here's another cluster I can count. 
Maybe I'd go out in the garden and look at the other clusters. So this is just about coming back to that childlike curiosity that we all had and going out into nature and not being afraid of asking questions and allowing that discovery process to bring us more joy in the garden. And I'm pretty sure that if you go out in your garden and start noticing these things, even the most com go to your most common plant in your garden. It could be like, it could be a boring. I thought of like, I grew up with these all the time when I was a kid. So I never thought these were interesting. I thought they were boring plants, the jade plant, you know, and later as an adult, I started to, to learn more about them. So, you know, it could just be something that's really common. Take a closer look, take a closer look. How does it grow? What is the the skin look like? Like, look at these like little segments on this jade plant. You know, even if you didn't know the name, you can look a little bit more closely and draw what you're seeing. And using words and sketching and counting, measuring, we didn't measure today, but I have a ruler, might measure, you know, how big something is or how small something is. Um, if you don't have leaves in your garden, twigs are amazing right now. I don't know if any of you have fruit trees, but looking at the twigs, this is a branch of my birch tree. I'm noticing it's got these really cool um, structures on the end. And then they have these other structures that grew all last year. And so I think I might do a page with just exploring like what's going on with this branch and I'm gonna watch it as it grows throughout the season. So I'm hoping that this will bring another layer of excitement and wonder and joy to your already um, fulfilling activity of gardening. So I'm, I know this was super short, I'm gonna wrap it up. If you are interested in learning more, I offer a monthly nature journal club online. So you can join just like this and we can journal together in a group. Um, I also have classes that I do in smaller groups and lots of different things going on throughout the month. So you can um, find that at sparkinnature.com. Um, and on the events. I think you have an email list. So what I'll do is I'm going to send um, Grace a few different links so that you can, um, here's another one too, you can join me. I'm going to put something in the chat here. I don't know if you're able to, to go to the chat, but if you go to this link, you can um, sign up and get a free full color nature journal guide that I've made. And it'll go through some of the things that I've talked about and you'll have it, you know, you can print it out and have it for your own and you'll get some updates from me on um, ways to nature journal.